Good morning, everyone. It's the top of the hour. We'll get started. I'm Dia Wagesback in Houston. I'd like to welcome everyone to today's GlomCon session. Today is our clinical trials conference series, which is a joint venture between GlomCon and NEFCURE. Before we get to our topic and speakers, I would like to share with you a little bit about NEFCURE. Um, NEFCURE Kidney International's mission is to accelerate research and provide effective treatments for rare forms of nephrotic syndrome and provide education and support to improve the lives of those affected by protein spilling disease. And one of the resources they provide is this Kidney Health Gateway, which can help both patients, uh, physicians, family members find different ongoing trials that you, though your patient may be eligible for, so we can help uh, advance our treatments for kidney disease. So today our title is Emerging Therapies for IgA Nephropathy. Our speaker is Dr. Dana Rizek. She is a professor of medicine in the Division of Nephrology at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Uh, all right, well, thank you all for joining us today. I uh, am humbled to have that many participants from all over the world. Thank you for taking the time out of your weekend uh, to join. Uh, so these are our disclosures, again, uh, mine and uh, my two colleagues uh, and panelists uh, here. And of course, I want to remind you that the data we're discussing today uh, is uh, still uh, under investigation, and therefore the efficacy and safety of these drugs have not been established, but uh, hopefully they will offer uh, potential therapeutics for IgA nephropathy in the near future. Uh, so uh, IgA nephropathy, as you uh, may know, is the most common primary glomerulonephritis globally. In the big scheme of things, however, it's still considered a rare uh, disease. Uh, it uh, affects mostly young people, uh, and the peak incidence is in the second and third decade of life. And a subset of patients uh, have a progressive disease that leads to end-stage uh, kidney failure uh, by about uh, 30 to 45 percent of patients over a period of 20 to 25 years from the time of diagnosis, which is typically the time of biopsy. There are so far limited treatment options for these high-risk patients. Uh, of course, they have to be on renin-angiotensin system inhibition, whether you use ACE inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers. Uh, and uh, beyond that, you can uh, certainly try steroid and immunosuppressive agents, but uh, so far the data for those uh, have uh, been uh, associated with some side effects, particularly when we talk about systemic steroids and uh, immunosuppressive agents, a lot of them have been tested and did not pan out uh, to be beneficial. Uh, I would point out that recently Tarpeo or budesonide, which is a localized uh, budesonide, uh, not a systemic version of it, uh, has been approved conditionally by the FDA. And what that means is that the FDA allowed, them, uh, allowed the drug to be available on the market uh, based on the data uh, that uh, showed a reduction in proteinuria outcome with the treatment uh, with Tarpeo. Uh, this approval is, as I mentioned, conditional, and the uh, hard outcome of uh, the, the effect of Tarpeo on EGFR decline will really determine if the drug uh, remains approved or this approval is withdrawn. Uh, so what do we know about IgA uh, nephropathy pathogenesis? Uh, we now know that it is an autoimmune disease that starts with uh, HIT1, uh, which is an increased level of galactose-deficient IgA1. Uh, this is considered to be an autoantigen against which the body starts forming autoantibodies. And there are really two subtypes of autoantibodies, IgA subtype and IgG, and we think that the IgG plays the major pathogenic role. Regardless, this uh, antigen uh, autoantibody then uh, form circulating nephritogenic immune complexes uh, that corresponds to HIT3, and these circulating immune complexes ultimately deposit in the kidneys, specifically in the mesangial area, and lead to glomerular injury. And through a cascade of events uh, that include cellular proliferation, overproduction of extracellular matrix, so on and so forth, uh, you have progressive glomerulosclerosis and tubular interstitial fibrosis that ultimately leads to a decline in kidney function and ultimately uh, CKD, but more importantly, end-stage kidney disease. And of course, all of this happens in the context of a genetically susceptible uh, host, 
but also uh, probably also in the setting of environmental conditions. So be it uh, something that's triggered by infectious process or environmental uh, process.